We'd like to encourage everyone to download our New Life app today. To find it, go to the App Store and type in New Life CC. Our app has a lot of great features. You can download the sermon notes, you can watch sermons, or listen to them. You can also give directly through the app, turn in a prayer request, and get Facebook updates. It even includes a Bible app with it. So take advantage of this great resource today. We are really excited to share a great free online service with you that will help you take one step closer to Jesus. It's called Right Now Media. Right Now Media is the Netflix of Bible study material with over 14,000 videos. These videos will help you in parenting, finances, and in leadership. It has great videos for your marriage, for your relationships, and even great videos for your kids all in one place. We are excited to be able to give it to you absolutely free. You can sign up for Right Now Media under the media section on our app today. We hope you will dive in for your own spiritual growth as you take one step closer to Jesus. So, my name is John. Awesome, good job. And I love Jesus, and I struggle with uh, drugs, alcohol, and lust. And most currently, I struggle with anger. I want to not be the first one to welcome you to CR Weekend, but you know how we like to celebrate here at New Life, right? We have baptisms, we celebrate, we have the big cheer and everything. You guys ready to do one of those? Can we do one of those right now? Ready? One, two, three. We do love, love, love to celebrate at Celebrate Recovery because we want to celebrate what God has done in our lives. It's not about what we do, it's about what he does in us. So would you pray with me? Gracious God, I just ask that you use me tonight, that you use me to help tell your story, the story of your incredible, reckless love for us, Lord. The story of how we can come to you without being perfect. We can come to you broken. Um the story that we can come to you in this very moment. And really, I ask, Lord, that right in this very moment that you use this as your school to us and that in this school tonight, you teach us how to listen. We need to listen to you, Lord. I pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. So, we're gonna start out with three questions tonight. And the first question is, what in the world is recovery? People, you've heard people talk about recovery, but what is recovery? Uh, when did it start? And who needs it? Who needs recovery? So hopefully by the end of the night, you guys will be you know, totally awesome in answering these three questions. So here's a little bit of history about recovery, okay? Um, does, I'm not gonna do a raise, uh, show of hands, but most people know someone in recovery. So you might have heard them say things like, yeah, I have to work my program, I have to do this, I have to go to meetings, I have to work my program, I have to do my steps, these 12 steps, right? So you hear a lot about that. So basically I wanna give you a little bit of information just in case you're thinking, you know what, the 12 steps are just from man. That's all they are, because they're not. Um, So you might be thinking they're not biblical, but they are. And I also wanna dispel the myth that recovery is only for drug addicts and alcoholics, okay? So, the 12 steps steps actually came from the words of Jesus, okay? There was a man, and he was listening to the words of Jesus in the Beatitudes. And out of those things, he came with some biblical principles, okay? So if you were to do a Google search on where did the 12 steps come from, you might come across something like this. There was a Lutheran minister named Dr. Frank Bachman, okay? And it was in 1931 and he founded a group called the Oxford Group. He believed that the root of all problems were personal problems with selfishness and fear. Selfishness and fear. And the solution to living in this world with selfishness and fear was to surrender one's life to Christ. That was, that's what he got, okay? So the Oxford group was dedicated to what it uh, termed the four absolutes. And from those four absolutes, they summarized those um, from the Sermon on the Mount into four specific principles. 
So from those four, we got 12 later, but here's the original four. Number one, sharing of our sins and temptations with another Christian. Number two was surrender our past, our present, and our future into God's keeping and direction. Number three is restitution for all whom we have wronged. That one can be difficult. And number four, listening, listening for God's guidance and carrying it out. So listening, which is the sermon series that we're in right now, has been a part of the 12 steps forever, okay? So from there, there was a guy named Bill Wilson who you might have probably heard about. He found it was one of the founders of AA and he broke it down into smaller pieces, 12 of them, um, when he founded Alcoholics Anonymous in the late 30s. And from there, there was a guy named John Baker who founded Celebrate Recovery 28 years ago and he wrote a letter to Pastor Rick Warren in, in, at Saddleback Church And when Rick actually read the 12 steps, he said, you know, these sound really familiar and he opened up his Bible and it's like he turned to the Beatitudes. So it's like he could see it that that's where they came from. So Rick actually wrote eight principles that we're gonna talk about a little bit later, which are the Celebrate Recovery principles. Um, But just uh, before we start that, let's read through the Beatitudes. It comes from Matthew um, 5, starting at verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so that's a little bit of history. We talked about the first two questions that I showed uh, when we first started. And the last question is, who is recovery for? You know, in my own experience, which started in recovery 37 years ago, um, back then the recovery community was pretty much drugs and alcoholics like probably most people still think today. It's drug addicts and alcoholics. And we did have a little bit of association with the church because we needed a place to meet. And we could usually talk to church into letting us meet. But it's not like we really integrated with people of the church. They let us use the church in the dark at night when nobody else was there. And the only communication we had was things like, hey, you guys keep leaving your cigarette butts on the ground or somebody left the door unlocked or something like that. There was not a lot of fellowship with us and the church. There was some other um, groups like for codependency and gambling addiction and things like that, but we were never all together. We were never all together. So this is where Celebrate Recovery came in 28 years ago. So John Baker was a member of Alcoholics Anonymous and he he did have a hard time with um, the God thing of AA being kind of nondescript, you know, because he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And so he wrote a letter to Rick Warren and he said, I think this whole 12-step thing can happen for everybody. It would work. We could have codependence in the same, worshiping at the same time in the same meetings as you know, drug addicts, addicts and alcoholics, um, uh, love and relationship addiction, people um, recovering from abuse, uh, all kinds of different issues could meet on the same night at the same time because the thing is our issues are different but our healing comes from only one place and we can get that all together, amen? So, we did have a little bit of a joke back in the day. We, we called ourselves those people because we did feel like we were different from everybody else, right? We were those people in the back of the church at night that did leave their cigarette butts on the ground. Um, and we made a joke about it. We even made t-shirts. I am one of those people because we became proud of it because we knew what God had done in our lives, right? Well, today, 
You can't even start a Celebrate Recovery unless you're a part of a church. There's, you have to have a church that says, I want Celebrate Recovery in my church. So we are all together. That's an awesome thing. Um, there are more than 35,000 CR groups just in the United States alone, and we're in over 29 countries, okay? So, and here's the part that I really wanna get to that I really want you to understand. And that is that less than half the people who attend Celebrate Recovery are drug addicts and alcoholics. Less than half. So what that tells me is that Jesus is telling us that recovery is for everyone, for all of us. Yay, she's clapping. I like that, Sophia. So... So Jesus is calling all of us with hurts, habits, and hangups into recovery from our past, from our sin, because we are all broke, we are all broken. Jesus doesn't have a sliding scale for broken, right? If you get to this point, now you gotta go to CR, okay? There's not a sliding scale. We are all broken. Now, I will tell you that does everyone have to go to celebrate recovery? No, you don't. But you know what? I will tell you that I believe that every single person could benefit from going through the 12 steps. Every single person, God will use that time. I see head shaking of people that I know. God will use that time to change you and change your life. So, from here on out, when I say the recovery community, I'm talking about all of you. Thank you again, Sophia, for clapping. So it's our journey, it's our journey one step closer to Jesus and that's our recovery. So, you know, when we get together sometimes with family and friends, what do we do? I don't know what you guys do, we tell stories. There's always, remember when you get together on Christmas, remember last Christmas or this happened or Thanksgiving or... So many of us tend to relate to each other through our, our stories and our testimonies. And one of the things that happens in Celebrate Recovery as you're sitting around a room full of other people is it reminds us that we're not alone. There's somebody else that went through the same thing that I did, has the same feelings that I have. We're not alone. Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10 says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other one up. The road to recovery is just like that. It's not meant to be walked alone. So now we've covered all three of the questions, right? So what is recovery, when did it start, and who needs it? So now let's talk about listening, okay? So I wanna start with a passage of the parable of the lamp. And to kind of if you go before the parable of the lamp, Jesus was teaching on the Sea of Galilee and there was such a huge crowd and how many times did that happen? Because you know what, they all, back then they wanted to listen to Jesus, they wanted to. There was this huge crowd, so he got off in a boat, right? So he wouldn't be crushed. And he taught, and he taught in a parable of the farmer who's sowing the seeds. And then it says afterwards, he was with the 12 and some other folks, I'm not sure who those were, but it says, and some other people. And they were asking him about the parables. And he says, you don't understand the parable. If you don't understand this one, how are you gonna understand the rest of them? So he actually explained the parable and then he came to this. He said, Jesus asked them, starting at verse 21, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? Of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine for everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open and every secret will be brought to the light. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Then he added, and here's the money verse for me, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given but for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. That's Mark 4, 21 through 25. So the first thing that I noticed when I read that verse, or when I was thinking about listening, is it didn't, I noticed what it didn't say. It didn't say, to those who read and try to figure it out, more understanding will be given. It said, to those who 
hear and listen, more understanding will be given. So your first fill-in for tonight up on the screen is Jesus wants us to listen to his teaching, right? You guys got that? Are you all writing it down? Right now you're all looking for the fill-in sheet, aren't you? (laughs) Guess what? There's not one. There's no fill-in sheet. So we do things a little different at Celebrate Recovery sometimes, right? So, you know, and the reality is, sometimes I write, I always write the fill-ins. Karen gets really upset when I don't bring my own pen because she's like, oh, I have to give you a pen again. But I have to write my fill-ins, right? But then what do I do with them? I sit them in the back of my Bible usually or in the page where the scripture is and I go over them one time and that's it, usually, if I'm honest. What do I do with them after then? When I first started to come in here like 12 years ago, I actually had this little place where I stacked them all up real neat and I could go back to them. But then when that stack gets really high, what do I do with it? I chuck it. I, don't, I chuck it. That's what I do. So I thought tonight, I'm going to have the ushers come down and hand out Sharpies. So for tonight, you can just write on your arm, <laughs> listen to Jesus. Okay? So, and if the person next to you doesn't want to do it, just grab their arm and you can do it for them, right? <laughs> so you can do that. But all kidding aside, maybe for some of us doing the fill-ins, and there has been studies, if you write it down, you will remember it. I'm not trying to discount that. But for some of us, maybe we need to do something different, right? Maybe we need to put a reminder in our phone that goes off for the next seven days at noon or whatever when we're having lunch that says, Jesus loves me, or I need to remember to listen to Jesus, Maybe there's something different that we need to do because we're all different, okay? You know, and I was thinking maybe next time, you know, Brett and Dave let me stand up here, maybe we'll just get a mobile tattoo artist afterwards and he'll be out in the lobby and we can just all go out there and get a new tattoo. But we'll see. Anyway, so all that being said, we're gonna kind of shift gears a little bit here tonight. Um... So we're gonna start listening to, this, to God um, through the scriptures, through biblical principles, through people's circumstances. And so I'm gonna have a bunch of my friends come up here in just a minute. Um, but you know how I said we love to, to um, celebrate and we love to do the whole, my name's John, hi John thing. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to not do that through this whole piece that we're doing. Um, What I am gonna ask you to do is to listen for Jesus, not through my voice, not through their voice, but through the scriptures that that they read and through their experience, strength, and hope. So if you could just do that and kind of save the applause to the end, that would be actually really great. The first principle of Celebrate Recovery is realize that I'm not God. I admit that I'm powerless to control my own tendency to do the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 5, 3. Jesus isn't necessarily saying that we need to live a life from our place of poverty or from weakness but we do have to acknowledge our need for him in all aspects of our lives. As Pastor Dave said last week, sometimes we hear him through our circumstances. Hello, I am a grateful believer in Jesus in recovery for love and relationship addiction, and my name is Davida. Four years ago, I heard a message from Pastor Dave about Celebrate Recovery. I was struggling with the loss of my marriage raising three kids on my own, and I was so lost and losing hope of ever having a happy future. I felt like I was drowning and unable to breathe. God spoke to me through a message by Pastor Dave, telling me that I needed help. I was powerless. The first step is to realize this. Step one reads, we must admit we are powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors, that our lives have become unmanageable. Romans 7.18. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good but cannot carry it out. I walked into my first Celebrate Recovery 
meeting in November of 2014. Since then, I am constantly reminding myself of that verse. I continue to walk through these doors every Monday night because I know how important it is for me to continue to surrender to God, to constantly give him all of my junk because I can't do recovery on my own. The second principle of Celebrate Recovery is earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted, Matthew 5, 4. It's here that we begin to mourn our old worldly ways, our old worldly ways of thinking, and we begin to grieve some of our past behaviors as we hear Jesus call us to surrender. My name is Liz, and I am a child of God in whom he is well pleased. I am in recovery from alcohol and love and relationship addiction. Step two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose, Philippians 2.13. The second step took a very long time for me. I had been raised in a non-Christian cult and had been indoctrinated to believe that the Bible was all myths or lies, that Jesus wasn't the Son of God, and that the only true enlightenment was to realize that I myself was actually all the God that there is. I had started my recovery in Alcoholics Anonymous in 1985 and somehow didn't drink or use for 16 years while I continued to struggle with God. I finally started to attend a small local church so that I could take my daughter to their Sunday school. There I met the pastor who would lead me to Christ. One day, it suddenly happened for me while I was singing a song during worship. The words on the screen were, I will worship and obey. I realized that I had always been trying to understand a God that I could order around to my will, and that what I was called to do was to worship Christ and obey Him as Lord. I heard God speak to me at that moment. My entire worldview changed that day, standing in that tiny church 17 years ago now. The Holy Spirit entered me, and I became a child of the one true God. The third principle of Celebrate Recovery is consciously choose to commit all my life and will to Christ's care and control. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. Meek doesn't equal weak. It's here that we have to boldly and willingly submit to God's authority. It's here that we hear him say, welcome home, my child. Hello, my name is Sean, and I struggle with anger. Jesus spoke to me as I was working the third step, which reads, we made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God, which is all about surrender. And the verse that accompanies it is, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship, which is out of Romans 12.1. During that particular weekend, my family and I were in the second row, listening to Pastor Dave give a message, which he ended with the song, even if by mercy me. At this time, my family was going through the agonizing process of losing our seven week old daughter to child protection services because of my past felony convictions. I remember being so angry at the system for this grave injustice that it was dominating my life, ruining my relationships and alienating me from my wife. He reminded me on this day, as my family and I sat listening to the song, bawling our eyes out that he is bigger than this. And that if it weren't for him, I wouldn't even have a daughter, let alone a wife and son. I'd still be in prison. He reminded me that he has been faithful. He's been good to me all my days. Even if our daughter was never restored to us, even if I never saw her again, I was able to proclaim then and now that my hope is in him alone. And by the grace of God, she's here tonight for the first time. The fourth principle of Celebrate Recovery is openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. Matthew 5, 8 is, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. In the first part of principle four, we have to look within to allow Jesus to wash away all of our sin, to purify us. We have to expose our sin and our shortcomings so that he can create in us a clean heart. 
It's here that we can hear him say, I love you just as you are, not as you should be. Hello, everyone. I'm Crystal, and I struggle with uh, alcohol and drugs. Um, oh, goodness. Jesus spoke to me through, um, into my life through working step four, which says, we made a fearless and moral inventory of ourselves. Let us examine our ways and test them, and let us return to the Lord, Laminations 340. Through working step four, I realized that Jesus loves me right where I'm at. Sorry. <laughs> loves me right where I'm at, and that through his grace, I am made new. My old life is gone, and my new life has begun. I am no longer defined by my addictions, and I'm learning that my identity lies in our Lord Jesus. Today, I can happily say that I am a child of God. Amen. Working the second part of principle four, we have to confess. In Psalm 32, three and four, David said, when I did not confess my sins, I was worn out from crying all day long. My strength was completely drained. It's here that we might hear him say, let it go. I got it. Hello, I'm a very grateful believer who struggles with alcohol and codependency, and my name is Michelle. Jesus spoke to me when I was working step five, which reads, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5.16. Working through the confession process showed me that even though I have sinned, I have made many mistakes, God loves me right where I am. My do does not define my who. The fifth principle in Celebrate Recovery is voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove my character defects. Matthew 5, 6 says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. It's here that we might hear him say, lean into me and I will help you through this. My name is Nathaniel. I also go by Nate. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus and I struggle with porn, lust, and a passive aggressive nature. I felt God speaking to me during step six, which states I am entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. The verse that goes with this step is James 4.10. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. I used porn and lust as coping mechanisms in order to mask my inability to process my emotions in a healthy way. When I was blessed to begin putting away my coping mechanisms, I found myself feeling like a shaken soda can. I could stuff my feelings for only so long before a person or event came along that I felt caused me to explode in anger, frustration, or depression. About the time I began working step six, I was often led to one specific verse in my Bible, Ephesians 6, 4, which states, Fathers, do not exasperate your children, but bring them up with loving kindness in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. I became ready to rid myself of my largest defect, exasperating those I loved the most with my passive-aggressive emotional reactions. In the second part of the fifth principle, we have to choose to change. It has to be a choice. We have to remember that recovery is a process and this process happens one day at a time. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves to slow down. Matthew 6.33 says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Hello. My name is Harley. I'm a grateful believer who struggles with a lust addiction that stems from past sexual abuse. I was listening for Jesus in step seven. We humbly ask him to remove all our shortcomings. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. I had already come through so much work and humbling experiences, but now I was going to have to bring all of my dirty laundry to Christ and ask him to forgive me. I didn't know what to expect. My vision of God for most of my life had been fire and brimstone, but I had firsthand seen 
a loving God, work miracles in the lives of those around me. So I took my inventory and I prayed. I prayed for all these things that I had done, all the sin in my life to be washed away. I asked God to forgive me and release me from my shame and guilt, and he did. I no longer carry that baggage because I am forgiven by the one who sacrificed it all for me, Jesus. His love for me never ceases to amaze me. The sixth principle in Celebrate Recovery is evaluate all my relationships, offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me, and make amends for harm that I've done to others, except when to do so would harm them or others. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy, Matthew 5, 7. If we listen very closely, we may hear Jesus through his word telling us to show mercy as he has shown us mercy. Now, the reality for some of us is that we have suffered physical and sexual abuse in our past. And if that's you, I am truly sorry. The step that goes with principle six has been rewritten for those of us that have been victims of abuse. It goes like this. We made a list of all persons who had harmed us and became willing to seek God's help in forgiving our perpetrators, as well as forgiving ourselves, Realize, realizing we've also harmed others and become willing to make amends to them. Hi, my name is Elisa. Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I'm in the recovery for after effects of abuse. Before recovery, my life was like a tornado, full of destructive behavior, tearing through relationships. God spoke to me while I was working step eight, which says we made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. The verse that goes with this step is Luke 6, 31. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. My true desire is to be like Jesus. Although I fall short through God's continued grace, he forgives and is in the process of transforming my mind. If Jesus can come in human form and be selfless enough to the extent of giving his life for me, then how can I not choose to recognize my wrongs and make them right? I became not just willing, but eager to begin restoring relationships. However, I made a list of those I had harmed and was distracted by feelings of resentment toward those who had harmed me. I knew I had to right my wrongs in order to heal completely. This is when Jesus reminded me how great his forgiveness is and how willing he forgives me. Although I don't deserve it, but praise God. The second half of this principle is about making amends. Evaluate all my relationships, offer forgiveness to those that have hurt me, and make amends for harm I've done to others, except when to do so would harm them or others. Matthew 5, 9 says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. He's telling us to make peace, to reconcile the broken relationships in our lives. My name is Rick. I'm a grateful believer recovering from alcoholism and depression. Jesus spoke to me through step nine, the act of making amends, which reads, we may direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. The accompanying verse is, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled with your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Matthew 5, 23, 24. In recovery, we say hurt people hurt people. My fear of people and situations left me isolated and uncaring. God's truth tells me that I don't need to fear because he goes before me. He will fight my battles. He can do for me what I cannot do for myself. I have learned to trust God who has never let me down. Through step nine, God has helped me to embrace my brokenness, restore relationships, and clean up the wreckage of my past. The seventh principle of Celebrate Recovery, reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God, to know his will for my life, and to gain the power to follow his will. Jesus said in John 8, 31, If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Hello. My name is Larry. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ, and I am in recovery from pride and anger. 
Jesus spoke to me when I was working step 12, which reads, we continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. The accompanying verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 12. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Early in my life, pride and anger had negative effects on my marriages, family, and interactions with my sons. Six years ago, I was sitting at a service, a CR service here at New Life Christian Center, like you are today. The next Monday night, I walked into the CR weekly meeting. I was ready to allow God to heal me. I met people that accepted me, as broken as I was. Recovery is a process. Step 10 requires me to daily to take a daily personal inventory and to admit when I'm wrong. This inventory allows me to recognize my victories and recognize areas that need further work and prayer. As we are obedient to this principle, listening for Jesus and for his teaching, we continue to grow one step closer and then one step closer. In Philippians 4, 6, we're told, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present our requests to God. Hi, my name is Karen. Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I'm in recovery for drug and alcohol addiction, and I struggle with the effects of childhood abuse. Step 11 reads, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And the scripture verse that goes with this step, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, Colossians 3.16. While working on step 11, God impressed on my heart the importance of staying in contact with him on a daily basis by reading his word and through prayer and meditation. So just a few of the things I am blessed with when I spend daily time with him are that he sings over me, filling me with unspeakable joy, and he gives me the ability to live free from my hurts, hangups, and habits. The eighth principle of Celebrate Recovery is yield myself to God to bring this good news to others, both by my example and by my words. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 5.10. If we listen very closely, maybe we can hear Jesus' encouragement as he pronounces this blessing to us. Hi, everybody. I'm a grateful believer in our Lord Jesus. I'm in recovery from drug addiction and alcoholism, and my name is Pepe. I've been working on myself in our 12-step program, and at this point, I'm on step 12, and it reads, having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. And the scripture is, brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, for you also may be tempted. Galatians 6.1. So God showed me through working this step that my life has always been about me and what I can get rather than how I can give and be of service to those who are suffering in their own addictions, and that I need to do this not expecting anything in return. So by doing all of these things, by listening closely, we continue to take step after step closer to Jesus. You know, when I started out tonight, I talked about you know, when did recovery start? And I talked about the 1930s and I talked about a lot of things. But in my journey of recovery, I think recovery started a whole long time ago. And it started in Matthew 4, 18 through 20. You see, one day, Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee and he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew. They're throwing a net into the water for they fished for a living. And Jesus called out to them, come and follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and they followed him. See, I believe on that day, that's the day that recovery started for every single one of us. 
So if everybody kind of bow your heads and close your eyes tonight, you know, if you were listening tonight and you heard God speak to you, and maybe it was through a scripture, maybe it was through a spirit, and maybe it was because your circumstances are just the same as someone that you heard tonight. I just want you to know that you're not on your own. God has a better place for you. If you heard him say that I need recovery or I need to take the next step in my faith, I really, really encourage you to reach out to someone tonight. You can find anybody that you saw up here on this stage you can find anybody that you saw in the worship band tonight, or you can actually go back. There's going to be a table outside in the uh, fellowship hall. But if that was you, please don't leave without talking to somebody, okay? So I'm going to pray for us. Father God, I give you thanks. I give you thanks for the recovery that you offered through your son Jesus so long ago when it all started. I give you thanks for every single person that you've allowed to walk by me and with me. And I just ask that every single person tonight, if there's anybody that felt like they needed someone to walk with them, that they would reach out a hand tonight because there's people that are reaching out their hand to grab it. We can't make you well, but we can show you the man who did. We can show you the guy who did. If you want to learn how to listen better, we can show you how to do that too. We are all on the same journey, Lord. I just ask that you unify us, that you bring us all together as we are all one body. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all you've given us. And we pray this in your precious name. Amen.